If you're not already subscribed to this YouTube channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button now, along with the bell icon so you can be notified whenever a new video is posted. And if you're already subscribed, check and make sure that YouTube hasn't unsubscribed you. And of course, be sure to give the video a like as well as share it on your social media. The white supremacists hate that. And now, the Sunday Address. Oh, it must be that time of year again. You can smell the desperation in the air, and it reeks. This guy's headline says that Kamala may be the Democrats' best weapon. You know, last time I heard some stuff like this was four years ago. Back then, they were saying that Kamala Harris's sorority ties was her secret weapon. Anyone remember how the skee-wee contingent got her to the White House? Me neither. The Democrats are fending off the accusations that Biden's just too old to be running for office now. Never mind that age was the main argument the Democrats used against Ronald Reagan back when he ran for president in 1980. And the Democrats were, of course, right about Reagan. He was already a demented piece of racist trash before he won the presidency. And a few years later, it was obvious to everyone that he was now a demented and senile piece of racist trash. So they can pretend like Biden's just fine with the whole age thing, but he's not. This man is clearly senile. He doesn't know what day of the week it is. You ask him what day it is and he'll tell you he loves banana Sundays. I mean, for God's sake, he mumbles more than any two gangster rappers you can ever name. Just everything out of his mouth, half of it is unintelligible and the rest is unintelligent. So they can go ahead and try to put as much lipstick on this pig as they want. Everybody can see that the emperor has no brains. When you have to watch a presidential address and you have to turn on the closed captions, and even the closed captions are jumbled, that's how you know this guy has no business anywhere near the nuclear button. Knowing Biden, he'll star World War III completely by accident. So, how is America, or at least the Democratic Party, to avoid annihilation? Their plan happens to be... Well, more of the same, but we're gonna go ahead and try to talk up Kamala Harris. We need to show some continuity of government. Kamala Harris. If Kamala's the answer, it must have been a hell of a stupid question. And how do we keep Joe Biden in the White House is definitely a stupid question. But you got CNN coming to the rescue. This is the piece that they wrote. Here we are at this late stage of the game, and this is the last of the dead-enders desperately trying to talk Kamala up. This late in the game, Biden's taken on water. The ship of state is sinking with all hands aboard. And when you look at the guy who wrote this puff piece, a guy named Basil Smickle. And what do we know about Basil Smickle? CNN gives his resume as a professor at Hunter College and a former executive director of the New York State Democratic Party. Former executive director of the New York State Democratic Party. So clearly he's not biased at all. Now, when you look at the name Basil, you should know Basil is a British name. It's like if somebody runs around with a name like Aloysius or something, or Archibald. That's a British name. Somebody who's trying to link themselves directly to Britain. They want to make it clear, oh, I have to do with Britain somehow. See, that's not the kind of a name that you would find from most Americans in general, and certainly not a foundational black American's name. You can't think of a white person in the U.S. named Basil, much less a black one. So we can already smell the Joloff rice cooking. When you go to Basil's Hunter College bio page, you see it says, Born and raised in the Bronx by Jamaican immigrant parents. Who most likely told him that he was better than those other black people and who told him not to have anything to do with black people like us? Well, that explains a lot of the rest of what he wrote, why he identifies with Kamala Harris so much, seeing as how they both are the children of Jamaican immigrants and all. He had the gall to write, not only is she not a drag on the ticket, but Harris may prove hugely instrumental in helping clinch a victory in next year's presidential race. Now, keep in mind, this op-ed is dated 2024, so apparently Mr. Basil Smickle doesn't quite understand how calendars work, or perhaps this is some sort of reprint from something that he wrote last year. In either case, when you look at the rest of it, you see he could have kept this one to himself. I mean, is he serious? Kamala Harris couldn't even win a single primary in her own failed presidential run four years ago. Forget about a drag on Joe Biden's ticket, she was a drag on her own. And she's always been a bootleg. Stop talking like she's been her own woman. That's the last thing she is. She's just spent her entire life making a career out of carrying water for whatever political benefactor that she's hoping is going to help her out the most at the moment. She was low down Willie Brown's plaything back in San Francisco in the 1990s. And that, of course, led to her being put on the fast track for all kinds of political patronage jobs and eventually higher office in California politics. From the bedroom to the boardroom, courtesy of the California political machine, where they literally pick and choose who's going to get what political offices. But the voters weren't fooled, at least not the ones outside of California. 
As soon as she decided to go out to the big bad rest of America, she found out that her putrid record as a prosecutor followed her, and black voters were on to the scam, and no amount of splaining or dodging the questions or weasel words could keep her from getting shellacked. Black voters gave her the heave-ho four years ago. So how is she going to save the Democrats' chances of holding office when she couldn't even save her own? Now, Basil also goes on to write, It's true that Harris is underwater broadly with voters, as is Biden. A Los Angeles Times average released in December showed that 39% of registered voters had a favorable opinion of Harris and 55% had an unfavorable opinion, roughly in line with the president's numbers. So, he admits that among voters in general, a majority have an unfavorable opinion of Kamala Harris. Most voters don't like her. And to get a figure that's over 40%, that means a lot of Democrats are represented in that number, too. Keep in mind, that's roughly how presidential politics breaks down when it comes to Democrats and Republicans. Roughly, about 40%, give or take, of Americans would say that they're hardcore Democrats, or at least they're going to vote for the Democrats no matter who else is on the ticket. And the same thing goes for Republicans, about 40% or so. Sure, there's some give and take, but it's roughly that. It's that 20% that they spend half a billion dollars every four years trying to sway the opinions of. It's that 20% that you need that number to swing one way or the other if you're going to actually win office. So once you breach 40%, that's why you see a lot of these news programs and such, they get all bent out of shape whenever they got a candidate who is either above or below 40%. Because what that means is you've either added to your base vote or you have lost base voters. Now, Basil, he goes on to try to whitewash the fact that Kamala Harris has a 55% unfavorable rating with Americans by saying a New York Times Siena College polls of battleground states released in November showed that Harris was considerably more popular than Biden among non-white voters and voters under the age of 30. Oh, Lord. Now, here we go. Just an absolute masterpiece of weasel words. See, I looked at the poll that he's talking about, and Kamala's not considerably more anything. Among voters under 30, there's only an eight-point difference between her and Biden. That's it. Eight points. And when it comes to race, there's only a three-point difference between Kamala and Biden among Hispanics, six points between her and Biden among other. The only place where she gets more than a 6% over Biden is among black voters. And even then, she only gets seven points more than Biden. And with the sole exception of black voters, none of those categories is at 55% approval for Kamala Harris. So how is she going to overcome that 55% of voters who don't like her? Where is this considerably more popular coming from? Word salad may seem like a good idea when you're trying to baffle people with BS, but when you got people who actually have an IQ higher than their shoe size, they see right through it. Because only one paragraph later, Basil admits, with Harris campaigning by his side and out on the stump on her own, Biden will have a somewhat easier challenge getting black voters and voters of color to come home on election day. See, this is that kind of ultra-simplistic nonsense that we get from white Democrats here. All you got to do is just put some black person out there, and the rest of these Negroes will be putty in your hands. Why, you'll just be able to manipulate them, because black folks ain't very smart, don't you know? Just put one Negro out there, and why, you'll have them wrapped around your finger. You know, kind of like a racist Ron DeSantis was doing when he had that bunny ruckus lookalike down there in Florida in the wake of a mass murder of black people saying, y'all just need to be quiet and let Massa talk. See, Republicans and Democrats both use the exact same tactics. But here he is admitting that even with Kamala Harris with him, Biden's going to have only a somewhat easier challenge getting black voters. Somewhat easier challenge? Gee, in only the space of one paragraph, Basil's gone from saying considerably more popular to somewhat easier challenge. He didn't say it would be somewhat more certain. He said it would be a somewhat easier challenge. Challenge being a euphemism for obstacle. So he admits all that stuff he said before was just spin, and weak spin at that. Kamala at best, and this is spotting her more points than she deserves, she's in an uphill battle. And at worst, she'll do for Biden's presidential campaign what she did for her own. He also goes on about the abortion issue, and they hope that this is going to motivate women to the polls. You'll see that again, by the way. He also mentions intersectionality. That train's never late. And of course, the trifecta of Democratic talking points would never be complete without also mentioning immigration. Because the goal for the Democrats is to try to find or establish a new non-black voter base. You need people who you can point to and say, well, they're doing better than black people, so that proves that there's no racism and we shouldn't be trying to change the racial pecking order. And at the end of this panderfest, Basil writes, 
it is also about a bridge to the party's future, helmed by one of the most unfailing party leaders there is, a black woman. Now, uh, when's the last time that a black woman's been the head of the Democratic Party? I think it was Donna Brazil, wasn't it? So here we are, back to the Democrats, trying to do the you-go-girl thing, and oh, black women are the backbone of the Democratic Party spiel. They're trying to see if there's any more mileage left in that dead horse. And by the way, where have we heard this before? Oh yeah, back in 2020 when Biden was running for office. Especially after he won the presidency, we heard, oh, black women put him over the top and they gave black women a pat on the head, and that's all black women got, just a pat on the head. As I've always told you, these clowns don't have any new plays in the playbook. So they just keep doing the same thing, only more of it. But even if we were so silly as to fracture ourselves along lines of gender, the question is, what in this avalanche of gibberish says even one word about what black women are even going to get? Other than abortions, that is. Basil made sure to mention that. Abortions, that's their gift to women in general. Not even to black women, just women in general. So the only thing the Democrats are offering the black women who they claim to revere so much is the chance to abort their own black babies. See, if you're a black woman, that's all that's on the ballot this November from the Democrats. Abortions. That's it. No more black children. That's it. Nowhere in here does this guy say a single word about reparations. In fact, he doesn't say anything about any issue specifically for us or even broadly for us. Instead, it's all about abortions and intersectionality, which means people who don't define themselves as black, and immigration, which also doesn't have anything to do with us. Now, this is an allegedly black man writing this. He put that crap on at the end as a way to sprinkle sugar on feces, but I'm not eating it and neither are you. This is them taking their strategy of ignoring the black vote and trying to do some end run around us. They're kicking their effort into high gear. As we told you, the butt-kissing bootlicks who you saw four years ago, they went into hiding, didn't they? Oh, they didn't dare stick their heads up for four years. But as we told you, as we get closer to the summer, when the election cycle's really going to heat up, yeah, they'd have to start slithering out of the woodwork. Sooner or later, they would have to stick their empty heads up. It's the same old bait and switch. They have these articles here pretending as if, oh, we're going to be talking about black people, and then they go ahead and do the pivot. No, we're talking about just women in general. No, we're talking about intersectionality. That means people who define themselves as biracial or LGBT or non-binary or whatever. And of course, immigrants, which doesn't include black people in the main either. Maybe a couple of people like Kamala and this Basil character. But for the vast majority of black Americans, they're not naming anything that is actually germane to us. And of course, black people are supposed to believe that all of these things that are being done for every other constituency, somehow this should motivate us to vote. Because all these other things being done for all these other constituencies. This Basil Smickle character, he's showing you the Democrats' pure contempt for black voters. Here it is once again. And this is what these bootlicks see their job as to show that they can corral all of us. They can go ahead and get us to toe the line. They can manipulate us. That's what they're selling. You put me out there, mass. I'm going to make sure all these Negroes get themselves in line. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But now as Biden's numbers continue to tank and there's no bottom there, some of these bootlicks are slithering out of the woodwork and this is what they're spouting. The same thing as last time, they're going a little bit lighter with the gender warring stuff because they see that it just hasn't really been working. But the game plan remains the same. Scare black people to the polls with all this fear mongering about the terrible orange man and all the racism he's going to do. All the while never acknowledging that Biden and Obama were doing the exact same thing, just sitting on their hands while black people were being run over roughshod by every white supremacist who wanted to come at us. These guys had control of the levers of power and did not do anything for black people. So while they're doing scare talk about, ooh, imagine how bad Trump's going to be. He's too dangerous to be back in the White House, you know. Simultaneously, though, they'll be trying to pander to black women, that is, with insincere praise and phony compliments and making sure they show up with empty hands. That's the Democratic Party playbook. They do not make any actual promises for anything at all, except for abortions. And you get to have the warm glow of knowing that Kamala Harris won't have to get a real job at least for the next four years. That's not a new deal, family. That's a raw deal. Okay, so let's get the obvious out of the way. Whenever you see someone who's cheerleading for these candidates, most of the time it's someone who's hoping to finesse themselves a job with that future administration if their candidate becomes president. We saw Simone Sanders and Cedric Richmond ride that horse to glory in 2020, though neither one of them were in the White House very long. For these bootlicks, getting to the White House is all about burnishing their resumes. You don't get paid much in salary when you work at the White House, 
But for Simone Sanders, when you were in the basement of the White House, literally. So instead, it's about going ahead and get this on your resume. You can say, I worked at the White House. Now I got a job on CNN. Or for Cedric Richmond, I work at the White House. Now you can go ahead and give me some sort of consulting job. All of them are consultants of some flavor or another. And it would hardly surprise me at all if Smeagol, I mean a Smickle, is doing the same thing. All these suck-ups are playing some sort of angle. They don't go endorsing somebody out of a sense of political necessity. They don't do it out of genuine conviction. They do it out of what they hope to be personal benefit. What's in it for them? But absolutely nowhere are they talking about what's in it for us. They just give us some feel-good rhetoric. Imagine how good you'll feel seeing this black woman as president. Now, for everyone else, they're offering tangibles. There's no, how are you going to feel? It's all about what they're going to get. Well, guess what? Feelings won't fly for us. This guy and anyone else from the Democrats can try to big up Kamala, but enough of us have gotten wise to the scam that they're finding it somewhat of a challenge to sell the same old soap. And this is what you've got to look forward to if you decide to vote blue no matter who this November. This is the Democrats' get-out-the-vote effort for 2024. Say hi to the new candidate. Same as the old candidate. Good evening, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Shabazz, Morris Bodden, Wesley Monroe, Jimmy Whitfield, and Arthur Mitchell. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black Empowerment only exists because of you.